It has been a year and a half since Carolyn Hamlet broke ties with me, Bride Ministries, and my associates. This extended period of time has given me the opportunity to reflect and contemplate on the unfortunate series of events that transpired beginning in late 2016. I have arrived at what I believe is a relatively complete understanding of what transpired, and I believe that I owe it to my followers and those that support us to provide this perspective. I also believe that I owe it to those that are coming across derogatory information about me and our organization who have been left to decide for themselves as to what to believe without access to an extended official response. After a year and a half of relative silence on the malicious attacks and slander that she and her associate Lauren Grace have vaulted against me and our organization, I'm going to address the attacks and provide some explanations that I believe are in order. At the outset of my commentary, I will plainly state a few things that simply need to be said. I'm not doing this for myself, my ego, or to save face. There are thousands that support us. Our organization is truly stronger than ever. And it doesn't bother me that there was an attack to, attempt to drag my name through the mud, the name of our organization through the mud by writing and speaking against the things which I've been called to do. You know, others have taken content from Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace and produced YouTube videos against me. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind if people disagree with me on the things I teach. I believe that this is their prerogative. What does bother me is that people continue to find libel published about me, my friends, and the ministry that God has called me to build without a public response to the accusations. While I do not regret choosing to let God be my defender for the past year and a half, I do regret not sticking up for my friends. I also feel that I owe a debt to the survivors that have only received one side of the story and for this reason were scared away from resources and community that could have made a difference in their lives. So here's the reality that everyone should know. I considered Carolyn Hamlet to be a very close friend. I worked with her to minister inner healing and deliverance between the years 2013 and 2016. We spent countless hours undoing the programming that she had received from the organization she was born into in government projects. I didn't charge her a dime and I was never compensated for the work that I did with her. Lauren Grace was my first paying client. I began to see her in 2014 and continued until spring of 2016 when she chose to stop working with me. The private details of things that came up during our sessions will not be divulged during this commentary and all of my comments will be restricted to those things which have already been acknowledged by them publicly. Regardless of how a client or survivor spheres me, I would never publish intimate details tying their names and stories to our work together without their express consent. Both Carolyn and Lauren have publicly testified to being survivors of satanic ritual abuse and also government-sponsored mind control programming. My heart breaks for them over this fact, as it does over every survivor that we work to help at Bride Ministries. However, as with all survivors, they have parts which include soul fragments, spirit fragments, and fragments that are a combination of soul and spirit. Whenever a person is shattered this way, these parts can have programming or inlaid demonization that can be triggered to make them do things that are within the objectives of the powers of darkness. Carolyn was raised in an organization that programmed their people to take down ministries. This is evidenced by her mother, who was trained to infiltrate ministries and take them down. When Carolyn publicly testified to this on my podcast, many people were blown away. I mean, in other words... <laughs> She was trained by abusers in the kingdom of darkness to destroy ministries that the powers of darkness deemed a threat. It is important to note that many ministers who have begun a journey towards helping survivors have endured public attacks and accusations by the survivors they tried to help. And for this reason, some of them have quit. I have met some of these people. I've heard their stories. The sad truth is that when a survivor gets triggered to carry out a program or take down a ministry, it's typically the case that the survivor isn't in full control of their actions and will even believe they are being led by God. Those on the receiving end of these attacks often internalize it as personal failure or a failure of God to step in and can be left in a very low place after the attack has been executed. Now, with that laid out, I'm going to tell you about steps to take down a ministry to, through division. The enemy can and does use infiltrators, which can be well-meaning but triggered survivors, to take down ministries. And before going further, I am going to lay down 
a systematic strategy for taking a ministry down with an infiltrator. Another survivor who has been featured on my podcast and has publicly testified to being programmed to take down a ministry has fully agreed to the points I'm about to share with you. After explaining this strategy, I'm going to overlay the series of events that transpired between me and Carolyn Hamlet and by extension, Lauren Grace, with that strategy afterwards. I'm going to address some actual accusations. Here's step one. Get close to the leadership or become a leader yourself within the targeted organization. Step two, bring slander against the man or woman of God at the head of the ministry and promote slander and gossip against them. Step three, try to take as many people as possible out of agreement with the leader over the organization, urging them to leave with or without an actual solution as to what they should do. Four, make the case against the leadership an ultimatum and force people to make a choice while providing no room for reconciliation with the leader. Paint a portrait of the leader that is beyond redemption and beyond hope. Generate an atmosphere of fear and panic so that people can come, become reactionary. And five, recruit as many public voices as possible to the case against the targeted leader and or organization, and then step six, continue to write and speak against the organization and its leadership. If this phase is successful, it will render the leader and organization incapable of effectively executing its mandate from heaven. The ministry will be taken down and its influence will be left in tatters. Now, I recognize some of you that watch this video or will watch this video are not aware of everything that transpired. Some of you know very well what occurred. But these are the steps that Carolyn and Lauren ultimately took. This is the history of what transpired. It began with me and Carolyn becoming very close friends. As a matter of fact, Carolyn was one of my closest friends, and we did many podcasts together. I invested countless hours over a period of years into her to pray with her to minister deliverance and inner healing to her. Eventually, I invited her to be part of the board of Bride Ministries because I wanted to have a trusted survivor to provide perspective on the decisions that we were making. She had the hearts of many people in our organization, and this is because of her testimony, which frankly was powerful, and her blog. In all of this, I believe that she was actually very genuine, and this may be my naivety, but even now, I do not choose to believe that either of us were aware of dormant programming that would eventually get triggered. This is not an accusation that she was knowingly infiltrating our organization from day one. Nonetheless, point one was achieved. Get close to the leadership or become a leader yourself within the targeted organization. Now, here's where the story really gets Heated. On October 31st, 2016, I received a text from Carolyn while I was on my way back from a short trip to California to meet with a friend at a church conference. It was followed up with a phone call during which she was agitated, suggesting she was leaving Bride Ministries. The following day, I received a text saying she was going to divorce herself from Bride Ministries, which was followed up by more communication and efforts on my behalf to address her concerns. And I really tried. I tried talking to her. We talked for several hours across a few days. I later realized that this is when the dormant programming began to get triggered. She brought accusation to me regarding a gentleman I had hosted on my podcast and a beloved woman named Darla, who has blessed the lives of many survivors connecting with our organization. I offered to take the offending podcast down until... Uh, Further conversation could happen and we could have some dialogue and figure out why she was so concerned. When I attempted to arrange a conversation between me and Carolyn and Darla, Carolyn actually refused. So no amount of reasonable effort that I was attempting to make to address her concerns were being acknowledged or received. The few conversations we had were circular, frantic, and frankly inconsequential. This, looking back, was evidence that a dormant program had been triggered, flinging her into a state of manipulated consciousness. The following weekend, without notice, she publicly posted an article on her blog saying she was divorcing herself from Bride Ministries. Now, she posted it while I was speaking at a conference in Tennessee. At that time, she was still a board member of Bride Ministries, and she did not consult with any other member of the board before making this move. She immediately began to share the initial article through Facebook messages with common friends, 
And this was in order to raise as much controversy as possible, and in this, point two was achieved. Bring accusation against the man or woman of God at the head of the ministry and promote slander and gossip against them. So this initial posting was made during one of my messages at the conference. I was literally speaking when it posted. And the thing was that she knew I was going to be speaking that weekend. And when I'd be speaking, even now I ask, why did the post go up at that time? Looking back, if she was operating from a place of sound-mindedness and a foundation of friendship and trust that had been established through countless hours of conversation that had occurred over a period of years, it's hard to argue that this is a reasonable course of action. Do people really betray their friends and associates like this without outside influence? Maybe. Again, she was still on the board of our ministry as she was beginning to attack. She went from bringing accusation against people I was associated with to accusing people firmly connected to bride ministries to ultimately making the entire conversation a direct attack against me. As she came out publicly against me, she did not request to speak at a board meeting about her alleged concerns, nor would she agree to civil conversations about her alleged concerns. She never submitted a formal resignation letter apart from her public statements. During the first weekend of November, when she released her first blog article against me, she immediately began accusing me of sending threatening texts to her. This happened via social media as I tried to ask her about the article she had written via private texts. Understand. Comments go up. Daniel, Carolyn has posted this article. She's leaving Bride Ministries. She's saying all this stuff. What's the problem? I get on my phone. Carolyn. What's wrong? Next thing I know, posts are going up on Facebook. He's sending me threatening texts. She had written, released, and promoted an article that people were suddenly asking me about with good reason because it suggested that there were some deeply concerning things about me and our ministry. She would not answer my phone calls. She would not be civil. She used my efforts to text her as further accusation against me. There was no availability for reconciliation. So what did I do? When I realized that any communication with her would be misrepresented and used in her case against me, I just stopped. This concluded our communication. Yeah, that's it. By this point, I surmised that the program to take down Bride Ministries was fully activated, although at the time I had no idea what was going on with my friend. She continued to use Facebook to private message my employees, close affiliates, friends, the Bride Ministry, survivor community, and even people that I was loosely connected with. <laughs> She sent them slander, libel, eventually her slanderous videos against me and Bride Ministries. And in this, she continually created ultimatums for anyone that responded back to her or tried to better understand her, suggesting that if they wanted to be responsible, they had to get away from me and our ministry as fast as possible. This was reported to me by numerous individuals, including my own employees at the time. And this point three was achieved. Try to take as many people as possible out of agreement with the leader over the organization, urging them to leave with or without an actual solution as to what they should do. She went after survivors in our community to try to recruit them to her cause. This is where it really gets painful. She first went after Elena, who was still my client at the time, and who had done several profound interviews and programs on my podcast. At first, Elena believed Carolyn's accusations and responded by publicly leaving Bride Ministries as well. Not too long afterwards, she realized what Carolyn was doing and decided to stop cooperating. When Carolyn couldn't get her to follow in her path, she turned on Elena, attacking her publicly as well. The stress of everything drove Elena into a very dark place. She got incredibly sick. And in her own words, she was left devastated. There are more things I could say, but I, I'm not going to say it in this address for privacy sake. But that was heartbreaking to watch. Then Carolyn continued to accuse everyone that did not immediately separate themselves from bride ministry, suggesting that they were wrong or deceived because they were not hearing and responding to what she called the truth. The accusation was that I was unreasonable, deceptive, and could not be trusted under any circumstances. The information always came with an ultimatum. 
She then made the official statement that anything I said that was contrary to what she claimed were was the truth were lies. In her mind, she had all the truth and I had all the lies. She was right and I was wrong. <laughs> and she was good, I was bad. This is pure black-white thinking, often associated with programming. She then evaded all accountability by disabling comments on the slander and libel she published to various platforms such as Facebook, her personal blog, and eventually YouTube. This, of course, was to ensure that no one could be seen publicly disagreeing with her. Then she connected with Lauren Grace and recruited her to be an associate against me and Bride Ministries, and by this time, point four was achieved. Make the case against the leadership, an ultimatum, and force people to make a choice while providing no room for reconciliation with the leader. Paint a portrait of the leader that is beyond redemption, beyond hope. Generate an atmosphere of fear and panic so that people become reactionary. Together, Carolyn Hamlin and Lauren Grace assembled a slanderous article accusing me of all sorts of terrible things, such as being a Luciferian, a practitioner of witchcraft, a teacher of heresies, a cult leader, and an abusive coach. Not only did they attack me, but they published private emails between them and Dr. Rob Ruckert and Dr. Preston Bailey without permission to try and strengthen their case and promote division. They wrote many have truths as they assembled a case against me, concluding that the only sensible thing anyone could do after reading their libel about me was to get as far away from our ministry as possible. Again, this reflects the ultimatum. This blog remains published on the internet, waiting to be found by any skeptic that would otherwise connect with our tools or ministry. You may be watching this video because you found that article and were looking for a second opinion. Anyway, to it, a negative testimony page was added, achieving point five. Recruit as many public voices as possible to the case against a targeted organization. After a number of people were swayed, they continued to make videos and write articles, ultimately composing an entire book, making it their platform to take down the platform of Bride Ministries. In the process, they brought accusation against many fruit-bearing leaders in the body of Christ, naming individuals that they neither had personal knowledge of nor experience with, but who they grouped into a massive accusation against leaders in the body of Christ. They continue to publish any material they can secure from others to strengthen their case, though radically unsuccessful. Praise God. They continue to pursue point six, which is to continue to write and speak against the organization and leadership. Now, if this phase were successful, it would render the leader and organization incapable of effectively executing its mandate from heaven. The ministry would be taken down and its influence would be left in tatters. What I'm telling you is that Carolyn clearly followed a proven strategy to destroy a ministry from the inside. She used proven techniques in order to introduce division and brought Lauren Grace in as her partner. Now, here are some scriptures to consider for going forward, Proverbs 12, 18 says, There is one who speaks rashly, like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who spreads lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. John 13.34, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Matthew 18.15-17, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen or a tax collector. So, you know, I forgive Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace from the bottom of my heart. You too. I hope you guys listen to this. And let me tell you something. I forgive you. I forgive you. 
and I release you. The reason I am doing this video is because of the people that are caught in the middle of the conflict. Friends of mine, survivors, third parties, and people that are going to come along your slander and libel. But I forgive you. Now, in the process of all that transpired, Carolyn broke my heart because I considered her a very close friend. I had grown to love both her and Lauren Grace as sisters in Christ that I believe to be incredibly brave for the healing journeys that they took. That's right. Even now, I say that. Nonetheless, they did many things that simply were not right. And now I'm going to address a few things that I believe deserve to be confronted. And beginning with Carolyn Hamlet. I'm going to say this very plainly. Carolyn brought false accusation against Darla Guerra, who is one of the most loving and compassionate women of God I've met, and publicly bullied and standard her, slandered her. It was not right. And I want to take an opportunity and stick up for Darla. Carolyn denounced her longstanding friend, Carolyn Aglowski, as a deceiver trying to gain influence by using her name. Carolyn was a supporter and prayer warrior for Carolyn Hamlet long before I met her. She was also a huge blessing to other survivors that connected with Bride Ministries, and I'm going to publicly stick up for Carolyn. Now, Carolyn Hamlet broke fellowship with every survivor that didn't break fellowship with me, accusing them of being cowards and of leading other survivors into deception, creating massive confusion in the survivor community with her ultimatums. I'll tell you, the week that many things were erupting, I went from session to session with all of my clients that were in our community, having to console them on the pain that they were struggling through because of the attacks and how upset they were at the way things were being done. These were the voices that were never heard. Carolyn forced us to call a meeting to vote her off the board because she didn't follow godly protocol in respectably resigning from the Board of Bride Ministries. Is it really? And this is a question for all of the people that bought hook, line, and sinker, her blog, and her slander, and her libel against me. I'm asking you this question. Is it really? Fruit of a sound-minded Christian woman of God claiming whose Actions are entirely inspired by the Holy Spirit. No. Holy Spirit does not inspire actions like this. Now, here are the offenses that Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace engaged in together. Number one, they took private communications between themselves and men of God, Dr. Preston Bailey and Dr. Rob Rucker, and published them without permission. That, that's not cool. I, I mean, it, it's really, it's not cool to ever publish emails without a person's permission, especially people that have prayed for you, loved on, been uh, there for you in your times of need, and so forth. This was done with the agenda to establish discord between me and men that I loved and respected. Then they assembled many half-truths and distortions of information and continually rewrote and reworded their libel to try and form the most potent case against me and Bride Ministries. They brought accusation against men and women of God, many of which have fruit-bearing ministries. Some of those they attacked are personal friends of mine <laughs> that I respect and admire. In addressing their actions, I am standing up for those that I believe should be respected and honored. The Bible is clear to not touch the Lord's anointed and to do his prophets no harm. Now, a year and a half later, and this is the saddest part, guys, and those that listen to this, a year and a half later, they're continuing to make their platform entirely dedicated to the attack of ministries they don't theologically agree with. Centerpiece ours. Posting not only their slander and libel, but anything they receive from others that will strengthen their case. Now, here's a testimony of Bride Ministries. The untold story, well, it's been hinted at at different times, but here's what happened. 
While it didn't feel good to get attacked, betrayed, and slandered, God worked all things together for good. In the beginning, it was hard. Going back a year and a half, within a few months of the attacks, our financial support dried up. As many of our supporters were struggling with whether to trust me and Bride Ministries. And I can't blame them, right? I said, God, you be my defender. So there was only ever one side of the story publicly present. Many people walked away or went on the fence to see what would happen. Thus, with reduced funding, I could no longer afford to pay staff or continue to support as many survivor healing journeys as we had committed to. At one point, we only had $600 in the ministry bank account. This was an all-time low for the ministry. I had to personally put thousands of dollars of my own money into Bride on top of my tithes just to prevent the organization from failing to pay out our financial obligations. This is a true story. The mandatory financial cutbacks ultimately led to the dissolution of my entire staff and a lot of hurt feelings. Now, whereas at one point I had three staff members and a number of contractors, things transitioned to a place where I had to do the day in and day out duties entirely by myself. This did not include the production of the Fireplace Church services, but it did include the podcast, the Fireplace Church live stream, the incredible amount of one-on-one -on -one coaching hours I was committed to, and writing, communicating with emails, I mean, all of that. I And it was a lot. Praise God that things didn't have to go this way very long before Christian, who was at that time my fiancé, now my lovely wife, stepped up and began to help with the business component of Bride Ministries. She also began to help with fielding the emails that would come into the organization. She volunteered in this capacity and began to rethink our systems from the ground up, diagnosing our inefficiencies and building our new website that many of you get to appreciate now that would present a much cleaner face to the organization while streamlining many functions and eliminating the leads for a larger staff with better systems. She helped us to do more with less. And as time went on, it became clear to more and more people that the slander and libel against me and Bride Ministries was misguided. Our podcast listenership increased significantly. We changed our approach to the Fireplace Church and attendance doubled and then doubled again. We reduced our spending through most of 2017, but with improving systems, we were able to offer more by spending less. And then in the last part of the year, our ministry finances blossomed. And as financial support began to pour in, uh, Bride Ministries was just blessed as never before. And currently, we have more reach, more influence, more resources, and more impact than at any other time in our ministry's history. God is moving, and we get testimonies pouring in every week regarding the way God is transforming the lives of those that have connected with this ministry and resources. Now, we're in the early stages of building the Bride Ministries Institute, which will be the platform through which we release the DID coaching school that I've been casting vision for for years. God's favor is upon us. And with the recent release of my book, Prayers That Shake Heaven and Earth, the testimonies that come back have only multiplied. In addition to this, many of the people that either accused me, questioned me, or walked away altogether have come back and apologized. We continue to receive testimonies detailing how the Lord personally revealed the true nature behind the inspiration of Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace. And I cannot count, nor do I care to tabulate. The number of times people have come to me with revelations and discernment on the way the enemy manipulated and used these broken women. Most of those that didn't come back around were people that created challenges at Bride Ministries. And to be honest, what I realized in hindsight, is that God used the attacks to prune our organization so that we could be repositioned to grow in a much healthier way. And at the end of the day, God worked all things together for good. That's the testimony of Bride Ministries. Now, this is the evidence of their bad fruit. One of the things that Jesus said in his work is that you will know them by their fruit. What kind of bad fruit do Carolyn and Lauren produce? One, and these are my points, they attack the gifts of the Spirit. But they're clearly taught in 1 Corinthians 12. 
many breakthroughs in inner healing and deliverance are secured by these gifts, including breakthroughs that each of them have had in the past. Some believers will never believe that gifts of the Spirit are for today. That's a theological difference. But, man, is it an impalement of the power of God flowing through his children. Two, they attack the courts of heaven. Yet there are many biblical scenes depicting events occurring in heavenly courts, such as in books like Job chapters 1 and 2, Zechariah chapter 3, Revelation chapter 5. The revelation of the courts of heaven has been a profound blessing in the lives of many believers and has produced great fruit. It's been applied to secure breakthroughs that are undeniably of God. This is a revelation that has been well established by many other credible fruit-bearing ministers, such as Rob Henderson, yet somehow this is an accusation in their writings against people such as me. Uh, they denounce spiritual warfare as unbiblical, which, in my opinion, is religious programming designed to indoctrinate people into a powerless posture against the attacks of the enemy. This is very harmful to survivors and Christians in general. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the tearing down of strongholds for a reason. In Mark 16, it is written that we shall cast out demons. In Ephesians 6, it says we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And I'm just going to point out that they confuse God's genuine and approved methods of engaging in biblical spiritual warfare with the enemy's counterfeit methods of engaging the spirit realm. They confuse and twist this in their writings continually. And it's a major fixture of their continued libel and slander. Well, I said it. They, number four, attack the biblical doctrine, biblical doctrine, concerning the spirit of man with twisted language. And frankly, they completely retell their own testimonies to make their points. I, I was there for many of their experiences and encounters because I was ministering. They publicly put out a version of their stories. They're entitled to do that. They can believe whatever they want. Uh, I will say, I believe that some of this has been retold and reconstructed to make points that are not accurate or valid. Difference of opinion. Anyway, many believers are connecting to their human spirits and beginning to come into alignment, spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 is clear that we are spirit, soul, and body. This concept is not original to me. It's been well established by others. They may not agree that we are created in a, as a triune man, but again, we're back to theological debate. This is not a valid point by which to accuse others of teaching Luciferian doctrine, which has been done against me. Now, I will say, on the tail end of this point, Carolyn once told me that in her experience in the evil organization, they did not teach a triune man, and they did not distinguish the spirit from the soul. The Luciferian doctrine she received did not acknowledge a triune man, meaning denying the triune man and the spirit of man is essentially pushing people into the belief system she was indoctrinated with in the cult. <laughs> It's silly to me. As a matter of fact, I've laughed over the silliness of some of the accusations that have been written. I, I can't make sense of the, some of the logic they apply. Anyway, point five. They came against partnering with Jesus in the process of ministry because of their overwhelming fear of being deceived by a false Jesus. This is by far, to me, the most telling source of their inspiration. If I... Daniel Duval am not partnered with the true Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is come in the flesh. I am not doing ministry, period. Now, here's some of our fruit since the attack. We at Bride Ministries have continued to provide coaching opportunities for survivors that cannot afford it. We have continued to create prayer resources that help people to get the freedom and breakthroughs they are seeking out and make them available for free at BrideMovement.com. We've continued to produce podcasts that explore the mechanics of the spirit realm, answer people's questions, and advance a platform that gives survivors a voice to the greater body of Christ. We've expanded the Fireplace Church and have experienced an increase in attendance. We have been blessed and financially repositioned as an organization allowing us to take on bigger projects and exploits for Jesus. 
We have established the Bride Ministries Institute. We've begun hosting monthly intercessory prayer meetings for the city of Dallas. We've continued to offer survivor support groups to healing survivors. We have released people to host weekly and bi-weekly groups through the ministry platform, empowering believers to step out in their gifts. And we continue to create disciples of Jesus Christ and offer live trainings. That's what we're doing. Our hand is at the plow. With all of this said, I'm going to answer the question, am I a Luciferian? Dan Duvall argues a Luciferian. <laughs> what about the accusations regarding what Daniel teaches at Bride Ministries? What about his spirit man doctrine? What about the shining ones? Is he teaching heresy? First, <clears throat> contrary to my accusers, I uh, make my teachings public. While I have conversations on topic, I'm not ready to teach. With people those topics are relevant to, I do not have secret doctrines or teachings I reserve only for survivors that I am targeting with witchcraft. The accusation is literally preposterous. Two, Carolyn and Lauren are promoting a very different theology than I embrace. Okay, Plain and simple, we disagree, and I'm okay with that. They are well within their rights and very much entitled to believe whatever they want about their own stories and healing journeys. They're entitled to their views and opinions of Scripture. They don't have to believe in spiritual gifts. They don't have to believe in the courts of heaven. They don't have to believe in the spirit man. They don't believe in any of that stuff at all. Neither do you, <laughs> frankly. But to accuse me of deceiving others with Luciferian doctrine is a misplaced accusation. They do not believe in the reality of the courts of heaven. But again, I'll reference Job chapters 1 and 2, Zechariah chapter 3, Daniel chapters 7, verses 9 and 10, and many other biblical references where you see the courts of heaven described. I've used the courts of heaven and seen the fruit they can produce in the lives of believers trying to address complex problems in the spirit. And so have thousands of other believers. They don't believe in spiritual gifts, but I do, because you know, 1 Corinthians 12, 11 through, or 1 through 11 says they're there, right? And once a person steps into relationship with the Holy Spirit and begins to flow in the gifts, it's just hard to go backwards. Once you pray in tongues, you pray in tongues. There it is. Okay, uh, they don't believe in a triune nature of man. Well, it's clearly articulated in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, they you know, don't believe that people should work with Jesus in order to take their healing journey because they will end up working with a counterfeit Jesus that is actually a demon. This is all in their, you know, accusations and writings. And I, I'm going to be honest. I believe that there are demons that dress up like Jesus and that people can work with the true Yeshua, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, or the demon. There's a balance. And yes, discernment is required, especially when you get into the ministry to survivors that have been through satanic rituals that you know, involved people dressing up like Jesus and doing terrible things. It's real. It, it really happens. But the Bible says in John 10, 4, that his sheep know his voice and they will follow him. Not every Jesus is a fake Jesus. You can't glorify the counterfeit in order to subtract the reality of the genuine. Now, third, and this is the biggest thing, right? I have been accused of teaching Luciferian doctrine of shiny ones. And here's a little quote from their article against me. It says, Carolyn has her own perspective to add, but to me, the entire affair with Duval boils down to this. The public spirit man teaching combined with the ungodly belief that it is okay with God if people are half human and half angel. Biblically, this human angel hybrid came about because of fallen angels and is not something God was or is okay with. This led to the private Shining Ones theology, which has led to all sorts of other occult doctrines, including astral travel in the guise of spirit travel, remote viewing under the name Seeing in the Spirit, sending forth demons to attack people. The demons are disguised as angels, and they are doing this again in the name of spiritual warfare and prayer. Necromancy. This is something I will have to discuss another time because there was necromancy going on in counseling regardless of what Duval publicly says and all sorts of other disgusting satanic practices that Christians should have nothing to do with. Well, first of all, I do coaching. Um, next, I will plainly address the Shining One's accusation at that time, because this, this is the thing, it, 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 especially if you're one that has come from their blog or whatever, and you've read the 
massive amount of accusation. It, its centerpiece is on the Shining One's theology. Did the subject of Shining Ones come up in sessions with Lauren Grace? Yes, it did. Did the subject of Shining Ones come up in sessions with other clients of mine? Yeah, it did. It's true. <laughs> it did. It happened, and you know what? It continues to happen. I have no need to lie about this. I did not fully understand what the term Shining One even meant at the outset. And when it came up with multiple clients, it became a subject of conversation among certain survivors within our strictly internet community at that time. Now we have a beautiful Dallas community, but at that time it was all on the internet. Now, I didn't fully understand why the concept of Shining Ones came up in certain survivors. I'm a student. When I raised the term with certain survivors, it had meaning and resonance. With others, it didn't. This holds true for many concepts I've explored that led to great breakthroughs. Here's a list. You know, uh, as, as something came up with one person, I would investigate it with another, and sometimes one revelation could produce a series of breakthroughs. I could go through a long list of subjects. I didn't understand when they first began to come up, like, how do they clone soul parts? You know, uh, I didn't understand holographic technologies. I didn't understand gang stalking. It didn't make sense to me. You know, I didn't understand time travel. Come on, are you kidding me? I'm like a regular guy. I stepped into a ministry that Jesus led me into to help some of the most broken people on the planet, and it forced me to have to contend with subjects that I wasn't prepared to understand or engage or address. With. You know, I'm taking a journey. These are just a few examples of some of the topics I had to wrestle through, some of which have been addressed on my podcast, for those of you that listen. You know, I am a human. I'm looking for answers. And I was journeying a path to answer with people that I loved because my heart is to see them set free. Now, Shining Ones was one of those subjects that came up. It's like, huh, what is this? What does it mean? I didn't arrive at a firm understanding. And for that reason, I didn't publicly teach on it. And this is where... We, especially if you've been swayed by their article, I really need to ask ourselves a question. Do you talk about everything with everyone in your life? Or do you have certain conversations you reserve for people that will understand that subject matter or be able to at least dialogue with you on it and wait for it to be so grounded out and so rooted and so established that you could bring it before other people that I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's just think about this logically here. I, did, I didn't teach on Shining Ones because I didn't understand it. And after a few months, I stopped discussing it, even with those that I had come up with. Uh, and before I turned my attention from the subject, I did conclude that it had something to do with the coming plans of God for me and others. And this was only shared with a small group of people to test the words, Carolyn and Lauren, I considered some of my closer, you know, I, I mean, I really loved and valued these women and I thought very highly of them. And I shared things, you know, if, if I was running into something new that I thought might help them on their healing journey, we talked about it, we brought it up. With this said, more than one person in this small circle were praying into this subject. And frankly, Lauren Grace provided quite a few data points to me regarding the subject, which at the time she alleged were told her by Jesus. You know, when certain people, including her, Lauren, began to take great offense regarding the subject, I just stopped engaging in conversation altogether and moved on to other things. But Lauren took pieces that I never fully put together created her own narrative by mixing it with things she journaled on her own as she sought Jesus on the subject prior to great offense and used the whole thing to basically accuse me of teaching heresy. Her conclusions are not mine. Her explanations are not mine. And nowhere have I ever strung together the thoughts she has assembled regarding the Shining Ones and the cult practices this alleged heresy leads to. Yet, it's the centerpiece of her entire case against me. So there you go. I ultimately 
came to understand that there are two sides to the Shining Ones conversation. There is a Luciferian agenda around fallen beings that call themselves Shining Ones. I agree with that. This is part of the conversation that Lauren and Carolyn focus on in order to make their accusations against me. The problem is that it's a moot point. I agree with their point, and I agreed with this point a year and a half ago. Frankly, these fallen shining ones have a planet that a particular survivor visited during their programming and occult use and reported to me. <laughs> so, this was reported, and I believe the report. I am not deceived that there are evil beings that call themselves shining ones. And I do believe that there is a Luciferian agenda surrounding certain beings that call themselves Shining Ones. Notwithstanding, I believe that there's a God side to the conversation. And here's the balance. It is written in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Since those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament according to the written word of God, God certainly has an agenda for his own shining ones. Okay, can, can we just let the word resolve the debate and the accusation? This passage can have different placement depending on one's eschatology. But my point is that for every satanic counterfeit, there is a godly thing that has been perverted. I see to remain balanced, reasonable, and yet continue to be a spiritual pioneer in Christ that secures breakthroughs for the precious and broken people God has connected to me. I don't have to understand everything that gets brought to my attention. It's an impossible expectation to put on any person. I do not apologize for my fearlessness in pursuing things I don't fully understand as I endeavor to see the children of God set free, children like Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace. So at this time, I'm going to read a few messages from those that were directly attacked by Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren so that their voices can be heard as well. Dr. Preston Bailey says, I am happy to see Daniel making a stand for those who desperately need ministry and have DID. I have been ministering to people with SRA DID since 1983 and have seen numerous Christian ministries like Bride Ministries infiltrated by members of Satanic cults or the Illuminati. It has happened several times in my ministries and many have admitted that it was their job to destroy DID ministries, ministers, and their families. It is my belief that this attack on Bride Ministries was planned long ago I have known Daniel for many years, and he has always been honest and patient. His patience is demonstrated in that he took a year and a half to respond to these malicious attacks. God has blessed Daniel even while the devil kept attacking him. The slander and lies against him and his ministry are from the devil and not God. This is what Carolyn Atluski said. I just want to say that these two women have forgotten love the most important thing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He always cares for and loves his brothers and sisters no matter what. Carolyn Hamlet and Lauren Grace coldly and maliciously allowed the enemy to hurt and destroy deep bonds that God had forged between them and others. They did it without considering the feelings of others. They caused deep pain, grief, and sadness within our survivor community at that time. They wrote lies about multiple people, including myself, and posted these lies from the enemy, knowing the truth in their hearts. In my case, I was never empowered to speak directly to my accuser. Carolyn, you refused to talk to me, and this action alone caused me deep pain and sorrow. I was crushed because I know that in my heart and actions towards you, I never did anything to hurt you. Despite my intentions and actions, I was accused like a criminal of offenses I never committed. I wasn't given the opportunity to make things right because you refused to speak to me after your accusations were issued. For me, it has been a very long road, and I have had to lay my pain in the Lord's hands time and time again. I shed a ton of tears over this. I still cry today. Carolyn Hamlet, you left a hole in my heart, but I still love you, and I still pray for you. This is what Darla said. I send greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Several years ago, I felt like I had to defend the Lord and what I thought was right. But he showed me that 
I was like Peter chopping off people's ears with my sword. He told me to put away my sword and that he had called us to love people, not defend him. So now every time I see something that is not right or that I feel is wrong, I am gently reminded that he has called us to love people in his example. When he saw people doing the wrong things, he didn't lash out at them, spew hatred, or call them names. He spoke in kindness, gentleness, and love to show them the truth. He also told me to not defend myself, because if I defended myself, then he could not defend me. He told me he wanted me to respond in love and in the spirit of reconciliation. Every time someone would come to me and tell me the things that were being said about bride ministries, myself and others, although the words hurt me deeply, I chose to respond in love. I bless you both, Carolyn and Lauren Grace, because when I bless you, I say that I want it to be as God wants it to be. Love and the spirit of reconciliation is where I stand to this day. I love both of you ladies. I call you friends. I continue to pray for his peace and love in your hearts above all else. These are the people that were attacked. This is my request to cease and desist. While the initial attacks against me began in 2016, the shameful fact is that Carolyn and Lauren haven't stopped in this agenda, even through the present time. I let out a sigh when I was informed a little while ago that they had made comments on their website against a prayer class that we offer to Bride Ministries. In a more recent article, they detailed that their entire book was written to essentially come against me, but they decided to generalize it since I was not the only one teaching Luciferian doctrines. According to their opinion, and it is one thing to state reasons for parting with an organization or group. It's another thing to continue the attack later, years later. What they are doing isn't of God, plain and simple. For all these things, Carolyn and Lauren, I issue a public request for a cease and desist. Please feel free to discuss Jesus, to promote prayer, to tell your story. But make your focus on him, not on me and those that you disagree with. For those that will hear this, I recognize that these broken women are not my enemies, nor the enemies of Bride Ministries. And that's why in this public statement, I am making it very clear. Carolyn and Lauren, you're not my enemy here. The Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In this public address, I've laid out strong evidence to illustrate that they have carried out a programmed agenda to take down bride ministries because of injustices that have been perpetrated against them. I simply need to expose it and articulate it as part of my responsibility as a leader in the body of Christ. I've provided this response for those that continue to encounter there are articles against me and other leaders in the body of Christ. And having said this, it is in your hands as the listener to judge the matter. I leave you with 1 Corinthians 6, verses 2 through 3, which says, Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? I bless those that have listened to this with clarity, wisdom, and discernment. Thank you.